What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Last Days of Warcast. We are set of the California-based band, The Last Days of War. My name's Mark. I'm Rob. I'm Danny. I'm Josh. And gentlemen, first on the agenda, shots. Shots. Remember this week. Enjoy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Rob, how you doing out there, buddy? Oh, I'm doing fucking great. Fucking great. Uh... Just working on some new uh, business ventures right now, so oh uh, yeah, have a little fun with that. Awesome. And trying to keep cool. They're saying it's uh, <clears throat> supposed to feel like 111 this week, so <laughs> holy shit, cooking. Yeah, well, without well, without getting too deep into your business ventures, whenever you decide you want to talk about that, congratulations. So that's that's All awesome, right. man. Congratulations to you, um, buddy. Well, I mean, it's not me. It's not me, but it's us. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Congratulations to yeah, for sure. I'll tell. I'll pass it on. I'll pass it on. Yeah, for sure. Danny, how we doing, buddy? Good man. Just working on stuff. I've been working on uh, putting together all the tracks for all the shows and stuff like that. I've been getting that together and uh, yeah, just putting that together. I got some new uh, Q track stuff that's gonna be fun when we hear it. So all right, all right. (laughs) Uh, There we go. Nice. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. It's gonna be good. Yeah, oh, I know uh, you were he, saying uh, he had to show me. He had to show me it too. You know, oh. like, oh, go. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I was gonna say. I know that uh, you and Dustin got together, and you said you guys are pretty much. You just got one more song to go over from the new stuff. Yeah, we just so. were. That's where we're at. I mean, uh, yeah, we haven't gone. We haven't played through Home Sweet Helen yet in this mm. kind of like rehearsal. We haven't gotten to it, but. We're gonna blow right through that and hit little karma, and then I think uh, I think we're in the room running it. You know, that's what's that up. Point. Hell yeah, man, that's yeah. exciting. Yeah, Josh, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. Speaking of working on music, I was at the lockout space yesterday with my little one, uh, going through all the tracks because uh, I know I had rehearsal with Danny and Dustin this past week at Danny's house, but. There always is a difference when you jam on an E-kit versus a regular kit. So it was oh, yeah. <laughs> more of just being comfortable, going through the whole entire 45-minute set, playing all the songs twice. So I was there for a couple hours yesterday. It feels more natural and comfortable to me on my own kit versus the E-kit. But you got to do what you got to do. And then like the last time we were rehearsing, we had a couple issues with volumes. So it was like, hey, how did the volume get lower on the cymbal? where you could almost like barely even hear it, even though I was hitting it. So then that became an issue within the ears because I couldn't really hear the drums and I was just getting lost, but we'll be better. For some reason, the the drum program, like we, the last, the last, last time we hooked it up, he goes to hit the cymbal and it's just like, it's like, we're like, what is that? And then we start messing with things and it's like, oh man, what happened? So we gotta, we gotta figure that out. Yeah. Just dust off the cobwebs, right? Yeah, yep. for sure, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, settings and shit like that, you know? Yeah, as far as for me on my end, I've been uh, just trying to make sure, I'm starting to make sure that I'm like singing more every day, whether it's on my way to work and back home, making sure yeah. I'm going over the songs, making sure. Uh, so like songs like Save Yourself, you know, that you guys haven't heard yet will be, it's our opener for uh, this for the set. And that's one where... Spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> that's a uh, that's one where uh, I still need to like get down everything. So, but yeah, I've just been kind of going through the songs and then singing other stuff, vocal warm ups, doing a lot of cardio. Uh, I'm really excited because I really feel you. Yeah, def- yeah. But like, as far as like for myself, I mean, you guys know, I've been going through my fitness journey here since the since our, since last year. And I just feel like I'm a completely different person. It's going to be a completely different type of beast on stage when it comes to my performance. And I'm very much looking forward to it. So it's going to be awesome. Uh, uh, Question with that. What is the difference between your fitness journey and my fatness journey? (laughs) Like if you you go into a bar nowadays, what are you ordering at a bar that's going to help with your uh, fitness? Uh, It's a good question, man. I don't know. I well, see the thing. What I order when I'm working on my fatness. And it's just a jar of mayonnaise. Oh shit! 
scoops of mayonnaise. And you, just, you get it all in your beard and everything. Um, just don't walk out of the bathroom like that. It, it sends different mixed signals. It's really bad. I love I love mayonnaise. mayo, and you just made. I, I love mayo, and you just made it really disgusting for me. That's horrible. That's gross. <laughs> oh, well, it started off disgusting. I'm just throwing this out there. It wasn't me. It's fucking mayo. And then you have Miracle Whip. Well, let's not even go into this fucking god. Yeah, thing. Miracle Whip uh, fucking it, sucks, it, dude. No. What the fuck yeah. is that? It's like cancer in a jar. I'm like, yeah. I don't fuck. remember where. Right. I think I think it was like my, my sister-in-law's... Uh, mother-in-law we had went to like her house or something and they were they had like a sandwich spread out and i was like oh do you guys have mayo they're like oh yeah it's right there in the thing and so like i grab it and i thought it was miracle whip i'm like that is not mayo? fucking mayo i was like that is not mayo dude i was so mad that i had that shit i was like this is disgusting yeah hey turns I out live, you went to the dessert uh, bar and just got a big old helping of vanilla ice cream in your sandwich <laughs> hey it would have been a hell of a lot better that's for sure yeah. I oh, live yeah, with whatever. someone that does Miracle Whip in my household, and, uh, and I'm not. I, I want to. So throw now it they're out. paying it's... rent. Yeah. Uh, so no. before we start, before we start getting into our our main topic here, I just wanted to say really quickly, thank you guys again for all of the feedback and the streaming of Little Karma. It's been about what a little over a week, two weeks now that the song's been out. Um, yeah. and it's just been really cool. Uh, but also I want to thank. Uh, everybody it seems like ironically breaking the mold has broken the mold of the algorithm on spotify and uh it's being recommended on a lot of the radio channels so like if people are listening to like corn radio or slipknot radio whatever yeah. it is we're getting tossed in their playlist and we're at, we're at, uh i have it written down here breaking the mold is at 55k right now 55k streams and we just broke 9,000 monthly listeners Last week, we were at about 4,000 monthly listeners, so we've gained about 5,000 monthly listeners because of Breaking the Mold in, uh, in the past week. Well, Breaking the Mold is getting about, I want to say almost about 5,000 a week now is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... which, is, which is really cool. And it goes to show you, man, uh, for those of you, any artists that are listening, just because something is old that you released before does not mean it's not something new to somebody else for the first time. And that's oh, why you yeah. should always, because uh, Breaking the Mold is a song that we released, what, two years ago, a year ago now, two years ago? <laughs> so, You're but uh, it's cool. Like and I, I love seeing the trickle effect of people finding us through Breaking the Mold. And then, like, because we can see all the stuff when it comes to, like, hey, after they found you, will you retain their attention for, like, 20 minutes? They went back and listened to, like, four songs or whatever it is. So you can see that, and I, I just think it's cool. Uh, Remain Untamed is are probably going to be our next song to break 50K. It's at 49,000 right now. And it's like, oh, no, it's it's probably right there. I yeah. Mean, it's, it's within so, 100, yeah. Yeah, it's really – that's it? just really it? cool. Put on loop. Let's do, do it because you – the time this episode airs – it there you go. <laughs> because every time you said it, that shit's happened. So let's go. <laughs> We're gonna well, and then uh, I think Home Sweet Hell is about, what, 5, mm. 6K away from hitting that yeah. mark as well. So. And we're only, like, we're less than, like, 100 listens away from, like, uh, Little Karma breaking 1,000 streams, which is cool. That's pretty on par for, like, our new singles. We usually break about 1K the first week, and then, like, shit starts to pick up, which is really cool to see. So, um, well, for us yeah, right man. now, it's 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 once once we could get it enough attention to it to get it in the discovery mode situation. Exactly, that's what it is. I yeah. mean, literally, we're seeing like a thousand percent increase in streams every month, which is which yeah. is awesome. So it's it's incredible, and I can't thank you guys enough. Uh, it's it's just it's a cool feeling. It's cool to see that you know what we intended to do with the way we've released things and the way we've been working and the way we promote is working. So that's cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, I wanted to get into female fronted uh, bands today. Uh, I thought it would be cool to get into that. Uh, so Rob and I, we were, uh, well, actually all of us, we've been talking about the idea of collaborating with other people, other artists and stuff like that. And we had a few female singers in mind and that brought this topic on for today so do you want to start with a band rob that maybe you would like to talk about that that you would love to do vo have vocals uh, uh 
one of our songs or do you just want to pick a, a different band in general? Uh, I think I think maybe one of each. Um, Let's go. Who, like, uh, I mean, for me, <clears throat> I grew up with, you know, even female fronted bands. I mean, you got fucking Joan Jett, like the queen of rock and roll. You got Pat Benatar. You got Heart, The Pretenders. You got all these bands mm-hmm. that were fronted by... Uh, even Fleetwood Mac, you know, where they, they have yeah. a female vocal presence and these bands knew hits and it, they were selling and killing songs for fucking decades. Um, yeah. But do we have the pull to get Joan Jett onto a track? No, no. I wish we did, Amen. but, you know, hopefully in time. Um, there we go. But but so for me, um, I'm, I'm more at a, a local range. Like, I'd love to hear uh, Sophie from The Unit on a track with us. Uh, I've been on tour with those guys before, and they're both fucking amazing people. I'd love to get, uh, you know, both of them onto a fucking track and and do some shit with them. Um, uh, There's a band called Fate Destroyed. Mm -hmm. She's an amazing singer as well. Um, uh, I'd uh, I'd uh, love to do some stuff. Francesca, I believe is her name. Yeah. So you know what I'm talking about. So, uh, love to have them on a track too, you know, doing something different and, and, and mixing it up a bit, you know, so it's not, not just me screaming, you singing, and that's all you keep getting in every song, you know, something, yeah, for sure. a, a little bit of variety. Yeah. And when it comes to like, like you were saying, local bands, people that we might know, uh, Haley from Gore comes to mind, like they're doing incredible things. If you guys don't know who Gore is, go check them out. She's a phenomenal singer and uh it, she does the cleans and the screams on on, on their music it's i remember when i first heard it i thought it was two different singers i was like oh she's and then when i saw a video i was like oh shit she's doing both that's cool as shit um but yeah uh if you don't know like uh, she uh her backstory is she works at nasa like that's her day job she's she works for nasa and then she just happens to be a metalhead and it's in an awesome band i think it would be cool if we could do something with her if we could do something uh, with Jess from Calva Louise. Uh, we just saw them not that long ago. Super friendly, super amazing people. I thought it was cool that when we went to go see them, as they were walking down the block past us, they turned and looked at us. Last Days of War? I thought that that was cool. Remember Danny? They were like, <laughs> she was like, the Last Days of War, right? And I was like, yeah, what's up? So, uh, you guys got name dropped in public? We did, dude. It was cool. Yeah, it was a, it was a pretty cool feeling that like, you know, because, like, I know that we knew each other through, like, TikTok and, like, we've messaged each other and stuff like that. But I wasn't sure if she was going to necessarily recognize me in the crowd or anything like that. And I thought it was cool that she did. Um, but, yeah, man, that would be really cool to work with something with her because it would knock uh, it would knock two things off the list that we really want to do. And that's, one, uh, share a song doing with female vocals and, two, singing in Spanish because a lot of the stuff that she does is in Spanish. So. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So that would be, I thought that that would be a really cool dynamic to add. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do what we got to do, make our, make contact with them and see what's up. But I, I think, I personally think the people that we've talked about would be down. So I think that's, that's awesome. So are you trying yeah. to get her to sing in Spanish so you don't have to sing in Spanish? <laughs> no. oh, Damn. So hear me out. Hear me out. It'll, I'll still sing in Spanish, but having her there would make sure that. It's correct. My Spanish is correct. <laughs> that my Spanish is correct. She could correct what I have written down there. So, yeah. I mean, cause... how many songs can you realistically sing about the biblioteca, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were just going to say about tequila. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Yeah. So, yeah. So, other than, like, the people that we know and the bands that we're familiar with and, you know, kind of friends with and stuff like that, uh, Josh, is there any female-fronted bands that stand out to you when you think of, like, strong female vocal-fronted bands? Well, when you're talking screamer and singer, uh, Danny and I will both agree about Tatiana from Ginger. They're a band from Ukraine that's been blowing up the past few years and simple four-piece band, but they're playing with almost any style of music they've been doing heavy metal shows they've done rock shows uh she happens to be married to the old drummer from suicide silence alex lopez 
okay. uh, who is now the drummer of P.O.D. So you'll see Ginger <clears throat> and P.O.D. doing a lot of tours together because it's husband and wife type thing. But from what they started off as, as a no-name Ukraine band and just blew up out of nowhere, it's pretty amazing. And the music is a little too heavy for your style, Mark, but she manages to keep singing <laughs> in all of their songs. So it's pretty cool yeah. like to have the heavy voice, the screaming, and the singing at the same time. Another one that's pretty yeah. cool is Alyssa from um, Arch Enemy. Okay. She yeah. uh, took over the original singer's job, but she was handpicked by the original singer, so that's kind of cool to be chosen by somebody leaving to take their place. So a yeah. lot of different metalhead singers, and then if I had to pick a different genre, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Hyrie. She's a reggae I don't type think singer. I have. Reggae type band, but an island girl. <clears throat> She's got a pretty good voice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. What about you, Danny? What you got? Um, well, like Josh said, Ginger, I, I, that's <laughs> would be, that'd be one of them. I would say Courtney from Spirit Box would be awesome. Yeah, think, she's amazing. Uh, I, think, I think the way she puts her vocals together, the way she, she hits them is awesome. I would love to do something with her, but, you know, um, yeah, good luck. Yeah, man. <laughs> hey, Do man. You like we'll get there. Stuff? Do you like the old stuff she did before Spirit Box? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I do. Um, but I some of their newer stuff, man, on this, the, the recent releases they've done, man, she's just really, uh, you know, picked it up. Okay. You know? For those of you yeah. who didn't know, she was uh, used to be in I Wrestled a Bear once before Spirit oh. Box came about. So that's how I found out who Courtney was. She <clears> replaced <throat> the original singer. And they continued for a couple of years, then the band fell apart. But she was in I Wrestled a Bear once for a while. Mm hmm. Well, yeah. Huh. That, yeah, that's cool as shit. So I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, like, growing up, female-fronted bands that I remember is, like, Amy Lee from Evanescence as somebody that her voice was damn near god-tier to me, like, back in, like, you know, back in the days when I was listening to her. Um, she's just always been amazing. Everything that, that, everything that she's done that I've ever heard her do is just always phenomenal. And, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they, they did come back recently, right? She did come back and do a couple of shows or something like that. I'm pretty sure uh, she did. Uh, they were doing a tour with, was it Hailstorm? I think, I think that's what it was. Yeah. Cause I, I've, I've seen videos like on TikTok of her like recently singing back on stage. Cause I know she took time off. Uh, to be a mom and stuff like that. So, uh, but yeah, it's cool to see her back. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, hell yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then I wanted your overall thoughts, uh, Rob. I'll ask you, what are your overall thoughts of uh, like Courtney Love? That's a rough one. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think I think Hole has some hits. Mm. Um. But I grew up a Nirvana kid, and so yeah, uh, just just the shaky ground about the, the you know, <clears throat> untimely death of Kurt Cobain kind of makes it a little suspicious. Hey, yeah. now my band's gonna blow up, and hey, now we're gonna do this and do that, and she was still kind of a hot mess when it all went down. And mm -hmm. and so you know, I give her credit for you know cleaning herself up a bit and pulling herself up by her bootstraps um but like for me i i went more with like garbage so like shirley manson and her kind of had beef for a minute and so i was more on the garbage lean of that because i you yeah know, don't get me wrong like i love butch vig and the sound he gets out of the band and and the stuff he's done with like nine inch nails and and some of these other artists it's just Nirvana. Fucking, you you got to give it up. Yeah, I mean, Nirvana, you know, just all the acts that he's worked with, too. Um, you realize that not only is he just the musician in the band, but he's the producer, and he's getting this sound and, and picking this up. And I, I've i always been a fan of, of Garbage. But, yeah. I mean, you can listen to the, most of my musical taste, and you can already tell that, though. So. <laughs> oh, man, I knew that was coming. <laughs> I knew that Thank was coming. You. Yeah. Um, so 
a band that I that I love. It's not necessarily metal, but they're more on the pop side. Is uh, Paramore, Haley Williams, and uh, she. I've I've always just been a huge fan of Paramore. I don't know if you guys or do you guys dig Paramore at all? Or, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. I've I uh I, I don't know, especially now. We, there, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. The um. What was that? I respect the cool thing it. about pa- oh he says he respects it yeah I uh I think the cool thing about Paramore happening right now is that like Paramore is opening up for Taylor Swift in in some of yeah. Taylor Swift's shows and it's crazy to see the amount of people that are discovering Paramore for the first time now because she's o- because they're opening up for Taylor Swift like all these little Swifty kids. Yeah. Obviously, you know, they, they miss that wave of Paramore being super popular back in the day when they were blowing up and just finding out who they are now and like Haley Williams gaining all these new fans. It's cool. They're having like a whole second, like a whole second wave of just fame because of it. That's cool. They were, they were a band that came through House of Blues. And the first time I think I ever saw them, they were a local band coming through on a local band night there. And it just kind of turned into like, oh, there they are again. Like they're opening for another band or opening for another band. And then holy shit, they're headlining shows. And so it was like, it was one of those bands working at a venue like that. You <clears> saw <throat> go from like, you know, local band night all the way up to headlining a sold out show. Mm. And so seeing that band progress the way they did was, uh, was pretty cool. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. She's awesome, dude. I, I saw them play with, uh, no doubt a few years ago this was like amanda and i were still just friends at the time and my cousin was drum teching for the sounds so it was the sounds paramore and uh no doubt at that show and after the sounds played amanda and i were sitting like pretty high up and my cousin goes hey in five minutes meet me down at, at the pit trying to get down there and once you reach a certain point in the venue they want to see your ticket in order to go down right and i'm like oh, i'm like my cousin you know and so i see him and he's like hey and he yells at the security guard and he's like he's with me don't worry about it and uh amanda and i got to watch paramore and no doubt like standing right next to the stage right in front of us the rest of the show it was pretty dope yeah was that at Irvine? Uh, i want to say it was i think so yes i was at that yeah. show oh awesome yeah hell yeah um yeah. But I will tell you this though, when seeing Paramore, they fucking stole that show. They did. Seeing yes, no, they did. Seeing No Doubt ruined any chance that I had of loving No Doubt after that. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Like yeah, um it it, it just it kind of surfaced like there comes a point when somebody reaches a certain status of celebrity, you know what mm. I'm saying? And at a certain point, they feel like, oh, I don't even need to work on my fucking craft anymore. It's just going to get handed to me. And it's just like, fuck you. Fuck this. <laughs> fuck her. Fuck this whole band. Like, you guys are, like, if that's what you're going to be about, cool. Just fly a flag so I know not to fucking follow you anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you're going to change your whole demeanor, your whole mindset to just be like, oh, yeah, give it to me. As opposed to fucking working for it, you know? Uh, yeah. But you are right, though, Rob. Paramore absolutely stole the show at that concert. That's that they were fucking phenomenal that day, dude. I was like, Shh. I think that's honest. I think that's the only time I've seen Paramore live, honestly. But it was an awesome show. Yeah, that shit was awesome. Um, were you any of you guys into the Yeah Yeah Yes? Karen O. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I oh, like yeah. I like, like them a lot uh, too. She did the cover with uh, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross of uh, Immigrant Song. For the uh, mm-hmm. remake of the girl with the dragon tattoo, fucking okay, yeah. uh, that was amazing. I just yeah, I I love fucking yeah yeah yeahs. And um, you ever heard of the band Metric? I don't think so. No, no. They they got a couple good songs. They're more like the indie style, but uh, okay, I thought they were pretty good too, as well. Yeah, um, yeah there's so many. Don't t- listen. If you guys are listening to this and you're like, ah, dude, fucking females can't rock it like, you know, dudes can, <laughs> eat, eat a fucking dick. Like, don't, you got bands <laughs> like the Iron Maidens who are going up there mm-hmm. killing it. You got 
baby metal, right? They took they yeah. took metal and added pop influence to it and fucking made it something different and are killing it. Like yeah. pop females. But I was gonna say poppy. speaking. I was gonna say speaking of pop, poppy. Yeah, <laughs> poppy fucking rules too. Totally yeah. killing it. So uh, it's, yeah, you just. <clears throat> I mean, you could you even if you're like Otep, and you go up there <clears throat> and you use pedals to get your sound to whatever it needs to be. Dude, just go out there and don't give a fuck what any dude says. You know, a lot of these guys just go out and spout off at the mouth and 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 kind of ruin their opinion by just being so blatantly ignorant and saying they oh, they can't rock yeah. like a dude can. You're like ah, fuck off. Most of those um, dudes have never touched a titty. That's why. You know what I mean? Well, so. that, yeah, that part. Um, there was one <laughs> band. There was one band. I'm surprised we didn't mention. What's that? Betwixt the stars. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. See what I did there? Yeah. I like that. I don't that. think anybody knows oh, who the hell she is. That is my other project I'm a part of, and we are a female-fronted band. So uh, in case you want to check that out, we are called Betwixt the Stars. But I think we are under the possibility of uh, shortening and changing the name. Uh, per some recommendations from some people in the industry that the name's a little mm. too long and they're throwing up a couple ideas right now. So don't hold me to it in case we do change the name. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, Flyleaf was one of my favorite uh, bands back in the day too. Fly And uh, the original singer of Flyleaf is coming back and they're going to do a tour pretty soon. Mm -hmm. They're going to be uh, they're oh, going yeah. back on the road. Yeah. Flyleaf was fucking rad. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah. What, what else you got? What anybody else got any 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 gems in there that you might not know that we might not know about? Well, uh, I mean, while we're on the subject of front people, we got a we got a couple of situations that happened with some front people uh, this week. All uh, right, like Steven Tyler of Aerosmith uh, uh, falling ill, so they canceled the rest of the retirement tour. Wow. Uh, now. Uh, do I think it's going to be the end of them? I mean, I've I've heard them and uh, the Stones and Kiss and Motley Crue saying we're done, we're really over, done. we're we're never going to do this again. It's farewell, and, and we're back. Next yeah, summer, we're back. Hey, hey, come on back. <laughs> we're just, back. Yeah. Uh, I'm tired of farewell tours that aren't farewell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just what are you doing? Oh, I'm having I'm having a goodbye party and and we're all gonna come celebrate. Yeah, let's come celebrate. Okay, well I'm still leaving. I'm bye. Hey everybody. Okay, I'm leaving. Let's have one more party. Hey, all right, cool. All yeah. right, now we're done and we're over. But we're gonna we're gonna still be over here. We're gonna play over here. <laughs> and now we're we're going back over here. And you're just like fucking. How many goodbye? I feel parties like do you the. Uh... Yeah, I feel like the retirement tour thing has just become more of a gimmick and a cash grab thing. For it's fans. a ticket sales thing, right? Yeah, you know. Last oh, chance, we... your last chance. Yeah. But with that note, the... I'm just going to announce this right now. We're doing our farewell tour this October. <laughs> uh, we got a show on Halloween, and we got a show on Dia de los Muertos. It's our final two shows of 2024. Ever. Um, your last, <laughs> it's your last chance to get your tickets now, okay? <clears throat> yeah, which by the way, Redland show, the Redland show is a free show. So, nice. there you go. There you go. Just Doing show up, the pack the place, Doing come sing with us. <clears throat> yeah. Hell yeah! Storm the stage, kick Mark off, That's... and throw him in the crowd. <laughs> hey, uh, somebody beat up Josh. Somebody Danny in the wiener. Like, yeah. <laughs> Punch Danny in the wiener. What are you punches, saying? It punches back, okay? It punches back. You punch him in the wiener, he punches you in the wiener. It's all good. Yeah. My wiener will punch your wiener, you know. Like, hey. Bunch of wiener hey, punching uh, going. So what's going on? You, you mentioned something earlier, I think, in a text message about uh, Burger King. Oh, yeah. So, okay, so I so it's really not so much about the story. The story made me laugh, and it made, it, it made me think that it would be kind of funny to talk about. So back, I, I found this article, and apparently it was like back in 2022, but there was this guy who got arrested, and he got served, I wrote it down, uh, 143 years in prison for, <laughs> for, for, for attempting 
uh, well, because what happened was, is like he he went back and like he he basically he shot up the place. He didn't kill anybody, but like he like shot like the the TV monitors and stuff because he was pissed because they wouldn't accept drugs as a form of payment for his <laughs> the Burger King that he wanted <laughs> for the Burger King that he wanted. <laughs> so <laughs> this is some good shit, okay? And it, yeah, yeah, it just makes me laugh. Like what? So how much do you think? say a whopper combo is worth in like bag of weed i don't know you know like, <laughs> like least, you know what i mean at like, least an eight ball at least an eight ball. <laughs> uh that danny uh eight ball is not weed terms weed. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying here uh, <laughs> I get it mixed up, you know. It's like, oh, my bad, my bad. Say eight ball, bro. You better give me like twenty whoppers for an eight ball. But um, yeah, man. But the, but just yeah. the thought process of that, the thought process of like, he was like, I'm hungry. I don't have any money. I'll just take this drugs with me and see if they'll like exchange it. You know, <laughs> like what's, what's well, going I'm on? Well, I'm gonna say I think that the thought process of that and then the shooting of the TVs. I'm gonna say probably entails some pretty hefty drugs, right? Yeah. So I'm betting, I'm well, betting this guy wasn't he... stepping up with marijuana, right? Right. At least yeah. an eight ball. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's got, he's got, he's on something. He's got crack. He's got, you know. He's well, got I'm that fancy. Maybe some, they didn't it. accept him because, like, maybe he had like a uh, a cashier who was a woman, and he's trying to peddle Viagra for Burger King. You know what I'm saying? He's like, like bro, bro, for that, for that. Whopper, bro, we'll get buck naked, okay? It's like, here's a cup of boner pills. Give me a fucking shake and some fries. I guess you can't okay. really have <laughs> you food. Get I'll all, you get all PCP'd up, take off your clothes, and get shot by the police. Fucking sounds like a good, fun day to me. Let's go. That's crazy. Now, yeah. Never, yeah, here's never what going. No, go ahead. Don't ever go to Burger King with me. I was going to say, I'm never going to Burger King with Danny again. <laughs> Once was enough. There we go. What are we doing? Loading up on boner pills and going to Burger King? <laughs> You're gonna shoot the place up. Uh, I don't know, man. That sounds like a TikTok special for me. You know what I'm saying? What's we, up, we Burger King? What the fuck's up, Burger King? You know, just go for it. Can I go large? Fuck Denny's. We're going to <laughs> yes, I can. Fuck Denny's. We're going to Burger King. They take drugs for Whoppers. Let's go. What the fuck is up, Denny's? Here's a bag of weed. What the fuck's up, Burger King? Can I give you a whopper yeah, for a whopper? Just... <laughs> oh my god! Now here's here's where I get a little like, okay, maybe he wouldn't have gotten 143 years for just the drugs alone. So you said he shot, went back and shot up the place. Yeah, how, I think that's how much part time of the 140 he something years. <laughs> yeah, but I'm I'm like, if it was just offering drugs for payment. Like, how much do you think he would have got for that? Depending on the drug, uh, what type it is? I mean, probably... I'm years, pretty sure had he just, years? like, argued that point for maybe five minutes extra, he probably would have been out back with the guy and just be like, here's your cheeseburger, let's do... You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> this would have been handled. You don't need the cheeseburger, well, yeah, I'll then. buy your shit. Yeah, he's, like, what if, he's like, what if I sprinkle the crack in the burger and we split it? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's how you do it right there. That's what you call the, that's what you call the quarter pounder. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Cracking the but burger. A, Where were they at? In and out? But a, a quarter ounce of weed instead of lettuce on it. You know what I mean? Give me that devil's lettuce burger. You know? That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Devil lettuce burger. Devil oh, lettuce yeah. burger from Kyle's I'd take a whack Jim. at it. Uh, <laughs> I would. <laughs> Where are we at on time, guys? Where are we at right here? 35. I see oh, 35. 35? All righty. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about before we wrap this up? Uh, well, we got a couple things. A couple things. Yeah. Uh, like I said, we got a couple <clears throat> shows coming up in October. Hopefully, you guys can come on out. We're giving you enough time and notice to make some plans, Book a make arrangements. Uh, Halloween. Halloween, we're doing a free <clears throat> show at the district in Redlands. Uh, that should be a great show. We're playing with System of a Clown, which mm -hmm. is a System of a Down cover band. Um, they dress up as then, clowns, by the way. Well, yep. I mean, it's Halloween, so, I mean, who could tell? Right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, you know, we got Mark, and he always dresses like a clown. Oh, not wrong. See, we're just going to keep the shots firing. All, all Let's go. Let's go. 
Um, <laughs> but then also two days after that, we got a show. We got a show back at Goodfellas, and I'm the really fellas. looking forward to this one. Um, we are playing with <clears> a bunch of friends of ours, and this is gonna be a great show. Come on out. Uh, dress up still, even though Halloween is two days prior. <clears throat> fucking come on out. Let's have some fun. And no, oh, yeah, you cannot get in at the door by using drugs. Okay. That's- <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say that. Fuck. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. Well, hang on, hang on. <laughs> because I think we're all kind of on a limited supply over here. Um, <laughs> I might have some room on the guest list. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what bring... drugs you're bringing, though. Hey, I brought fentanyl. No, I'm good. <laughs> no, we're good. <laughs> uh, what else we got? Same. Uh, Friday the 13th. Friday, yep, 13th, September. Yep. And then uh, also, guys, if you can, uh, check out our Patreon. We have a Patreon that we do exclusive uh, content on. Therefore, we're currently going through. All the songs that we've already released one at a time, kind of going through the backstories and the meaning of and any fun stories that we can think of as we recorded these songs. And uh, yeah, man, if there's anything else that you guys think that you would like to see on that Patreon, let us know so we can try to get that accomplished. You know, we're kind of tossing around the idea of maybe like throwing an exclusive cover on there or something like that. Uh, Try to see where we want to go with this Patreon thing. But for now, we got a lot of exclusive video content for you guys, behind the scenes stuff. Uh, check it out. It's only three bucks a month and it helps the band tremendously. So, oh, but yeah. there is a free account, though, right? Yeah, you could jump in for free. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. even if you don't have any money to kick in and you just want to see some extra content, too, in the mm-hmm. meantime, I recommend there. going over to our page and signing up and you can see some of the content. And if you want more, three bucks a month. Yeah, if you see this, if you see the free stuff and you're digging that and you want to see more, it's available, you know. So, gentlemen, that being said, this has been the last days of Warcast. You guys, thank you so much for listening. Uh, please check out all the links in our bio. Continue to like and share. Keep telling everybody about us. This shit is working, and we can't do this without you. Catch you next week. Yeah.